Hey guys, this is Vadim, and welcome to Apple Insider. Almost six months ago, Apple's iPhone X made its way into the hands of consumers, and with it came the groundbreaking TrueDepth camera system. As you all know, it's built into the iPhone X's controversial notch, which by the way, hasn't stopped the iPhone X from being the best-selling smartphone so far in 2018. TrueDepth brought a few features including selfie portraits and an emoji, but the one that's the most important of all is Face ID. Let's talk about our experiences with Face ID after using it daily for 6 months, as well as which Apple devices we expect to support Face ID in the near future. More Face ID features should be announced at WWDC on June 4th, so we'll touch on that, along with the TrueDepth technology itself, and some of the possible features we can see in the coming future. From the very first day we got our hands on the iPhone X and started trying out Face ID, it amazed us. We spent a few hours in downtown Spokane, testing and filming for our ultimate Face ID test video. Every single feature, including Apple Pay, Attention Awareness, and Unlocking in the Dark, worked perfectly. Six months later, it works just as good as it did on launch day. In fact, it works even better. It seems to consistently unlock faster than it did before, and no one has been able to unlock my iPhone X since I got it. Touch ID works faster than Face ID, but it's not as reliable. If your hands are really dirty, wet, or you're wearing gloves, Touch ID wouldn't work. Face ID obviously has no trouble with any of that. The downside of Face ID is that it won't work while wearing most motorcycle helmets. My all-time favorite feature is that notifications on the lock screen are completely private until the iPhone X verifies that it's you. On any other iPhone, people can read your text and email previews with the tap of a button. Another one of my favorite features is attention awareness. I absolutely hated it when I'd be reading an article on any one of my older iPhones and the screen would dim, forcing me to have to constantly tap the screen to keep it from dimming. Now, on the iPhone X, it stays awake as long as I'm looking at it, while also lowering the sound of any and all alerts. The biggest reason why the Face ID experience has improved is that there are so much more third-party apps that support Face ID login, like my bank app, Dropbox, and PayPal. Same with Safari Autofill, I pretty much never have to type in login credentials anymore on basically any website I visit. However, there are some downsides that I've noticed while using it. First of all, you can only register one face at a time, so my wife is forced to enter the passcode. Now that may be a plus for some of you, but it's annoying for us. Also, Face ID only works when the phone matches your face's orientation, so if you're laying down or your phone is in landscape mode, it won't work until you rotate it. I myself don't have a twin, so I obviously haven't had any trouble with anyone being able to unlock my iPhone X. As for the other TrueDepth camera features, I've gotten to really like selfie portrait mode. I pretty much use it every single time over regular selfies. As for selfie portrait lighting, it's more of a gimmick. I really only like the studio light mode, which slightly brightens the subject. And emoji is also pretty much a gimmick. I can't recall using it more than a handful of times since I got the phone. While it's been very popular on social media for making karaoke videos, I mostly used it for our Animoji vs AR Emoji comparison video. Now concerning which Apple devices we can expect to come equipped with Face ID, we'd have to say pretty much anything with the screen. We're not sure how long it'll take for some devices, like the iMac, but thanks to Windows Hello being implemented in a bunch of new Windows laptops, we're sure to see it on MacBooks and iMacs within a year or two. We can also expect every single new iPhone that's being announced this September to come equipped with Face ID, unless they decide to leave a budget Touch ID packing model for another year. iPad Pros have also been rumored to gain Face ID, which will allow Apple to reduce weight in bezels even further than before, but they'll most likely stick with ProMotion LCD displays this year. As for new Face ID features we're expecting to be announced at WWDC, we think we'll see horizontal Face ID support, as well as the possibility of multiple user support. Apple applied for and was granted a patent that would allow the scanning of veins in a user's face. If Apple combined this technology with the current Face ID, it would make it pretty much impossible for anyone to unlock your iPhone X, since vein patterns vary from person to person, even twins. It would also make it next to impossible to produce a mask capable of unlocking your iPhone X. We also expect Apple to continue working on more accurate depth perception on both the rear-facing and true-depth cameras for portrait photos, because it does currently have some issues with the cutoff. Concerning that, we're hoping to see more portrait lighting modes, or maybe even lighting adjustment sliders. Since Touch ID was updated to the second generation version, which greatly increased unlock speeds, we expect Apple to do everything they can to quicken the Face ID unlocking process. I myself just want Apple to give us the option to go straight to the home screen without having to swipe up to unlock. To wrap up this video, let's talk about what possibilities can come in the future with Apple's TrueDepth camera technology. First of all, since Animoji works so well, 
we can expect Apple to come out with some sort of face kit at some point, allowing developers to easily create their own facial animations to implement into their apps and games. If and when TrueDepth comes to MacBooks and iMacs, Apple could easily implement a green screen feature, allowing users to replace their messy dorm rooms with any background they wish. Have any ideas of your own? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.